Let's start a quiz. So the first thing we need to do is create a quiz. So if we click here on Manage Quizzes, and then we go to the Create Quiz button, and we're going to call this Staff Training. One, two, three. Now there are three different types of question that you can ask in Socrative, and I'll talk you through all three now. So the first one is going to be um, a simple true or false question. So is this a useful presentation? The answer of course is true and here we can put a brief explanation that, that will appear to the student after they have given their answer. And I'm going to type here because this is a useful app. Now once I've done that I can set another question and here I'm going to show you multiple choice. So, which of the following is the best app for assessment? And we can set as many answer choices as we like. I'll just do three. That's the correct one. So I'm going to click there. And I can give um, an explanation here, which is the others are social media platforms. And then finally, we'll look at the third type of question you can ask on Socrative. And this is, uh, I'm going to display how you can use an extra function where you can put pictures, logos, diagrams into the question. And here I'm going to say, um, this is the logo for which company? And I can just allow students to answer this question. And Socrative will simply collate their answers. It won't mark them or assess them for me. Or, and I'm going to uh, do this, I can put in some keywords that I want to, to come up. So because this is a very simple question, it's really just uh, a one word answer, I'm actually gonna write that one word answer in. And I don't think I need an explanation there. So I'm gonna click Save. And I'll come up here, click save and exit, and there we go. That is my quiz made. Now if I want to start the quiz, all I do is click start a quiz. I'll click this option. Um, and it comes up with a variety of options that I can uh, decide on how my quiz is going to operate. On the top bar here, these are two student paste options, which is exactly as it suggests. Um, the next question will arrive the moment the student has clicked their answer for the previous one. Or I can go for a teacher paste option where I can decide when we start question one, when we start question two, when we start question three. I usually go for this student paste option. And um, there are a variety of, uh, of options that you can click here. The ones I would draw your attention to, I would allow the students to see their results. I don't see the, the advantage of that. Um, I would click this, randomize question order. This means that if you have a group of students in a computer room, they're all answering different questions at different times, which limits their ability to be able to cheat off each other. And I would also randomize the answer order because this takes some pressure off when you are making the quiz. You can just always put the correct answer as option number one. Um, knowing that the kids aren't ever going to work out that pattern because you can just check this box here, randomize answer order, which means it's totally going to vary um, ev for every student and for every time they do the quiz um, where the correct answer is going to appear in the options. If you are going to give the same quiz to the same students just at different points during the course, they will never be able to learn that question six is answer B. For instance, it will always be random, and I think that's useful. So once I've decided on those options, I can just click Start. So what I've done here is I've actually loaded up the student part of Socrative. And for this, you just go into the front menu and just click Student instead of Teacher, and it'll come up with Room Name. And you get your students to type in this here, this room name. And once you've got an account, this room name will always stay the same. 
So they type in that and they click join room. Here they've got to enter their name. So we can type in my name there, Robert Pepper, and you can see I've appeared up on the teacher board here. Now, you can have this up on the screen if you like. Now, if I was to do that and I was actually going to show the student's score rather than their progress through the test, so this is how much they've completed and this is the mark they've currently got, I would not show the names because I think otherwise it can be a bit harsh. Public shaming is not really very good. Or I can keep their names up but block out their answers. And I'll show you both of the um, I'll show you both of those options as we go through. So here, here's what the student's seeing. Um, question one of three, is this a useful presentation? True, submit answer. Fingers crossed, correct. It is a useful presentation because it's a useful app. And you can see here that my score has come up 33% and my progress obviously is gonna be the same at this point. You can delete my name. Or you can delete my answer. So you could say, look, hurry up. Robert's already a third of the way through the quiz and you've not even logged on or you're only 10% through. This is a logo for which company? Remember, this is randomized the question order, so it's not the way that I put it into the into the quiz. This is logo for which company? I'm going to go for oh, what is it? Is it Socrative? No, I think it's Twitter. I'm going to submit my answer. No, I've got the answer wrong. The correct answer was Socrative after all. And again, you can see progress has come from 67%. The score is still 33%. You can actually see the answers here. You can delete my name. You can delete my answers. What else is cool is that you can actually now see the amount of people in the class who've got each question right. And that's a functionality we'll come back to later on. You can also click on a question, and I like to do this live as we go through right at the end of the quiz actually, and say, how did we get on? Well, everyone got that question right. Fantastic. How did we get on here? Well, we can show the names, we can show answers, and we can talk through this short answer question. So we go back to the results table. Which of the following is the best app for assessment? Um, okay, I'm gonna go for Socrative. Submit my answer, I've got my, uh, my explanation there. That's fantastic. And now I've finished and I know my final score. And I'm just waiting for the teacher. As a teacher, I've got this brilliant live results board that I can modify however I want to preserve the dignity of the students involved, but also to provide the most instantaneous of all feedback possible. It's absolutely superb. But it doesn't stop there. When I click finish, it gives me a variety of um, options. Now, I actually want to get the reports for this. So I'm going to click get reports, and I want all of these, and I'm going to download them. There you go, they've downloaded, and I'm going to open them up now. Okay, here we are. Straight away, how long did that take? 20 seconds, 30 seconds, they've all been sent to me. So I can click on this PDF. This one is for me as a teacher, and it's going to tell me um, how my students fared for each question. So obviously I was the only person doing this quiz, you could have loads of answers here and it's telling me how many students selected the correct answer from my class. So that's really useful for me as a teacher. So we can get rid of that one. Um, we can have a look at the, the class results as a whole and load these up. Now I'm using a Mac, so the formatting of this won't be perfect. If you were to open this in Excel, it'd be, it'd be much, much better. But you can get, an this is a little warning telling me that this, this isn't calibrated perfectly well, but you can see that I've now got this Excel spreadsheet which has all the questions and all the answers for each student um, placed in it. Finally, and I think this is the coolest thing, 
Each student gets this as a printout that they can keep and put in their books, which shows the answers they gave for the questions and whether they were right or wrong. So it's marked with a date and the score that they got and plenty of room for them to add on um, instructional feedback for themselves to improve. Now, if I go back, um, I can look at a variety of my previous quizzes. So I might want to look at quizzes and I want to look at reports from, um, from my class data. Now this is um, GCSE Unit 2 Key Terms. I want to get the reports for those um, and we'll have a look at individual students and the, the class reports again. Here we go, it's downloaded. I click that and let's have a look at an Excel sheet that's populated properly and you can see that the class did really well on their unit two key terms and I can zoom in and pick on any student that, that ooh, there's a few wrong answers here these crop up a couple of times maybe that's something that's down to me then so I can not only see here the percentage for each question but I can also see the percentage mark for each student and speaking of individual students I can see exactly how each student is doing because I can print these all off and give them to the students and they provide a brilliant um, set of evidence for what we've done in class and revision materials for them. Now this is a very simple overview on what you can do with Socrative. There are other cool things like the space race, like um, a quick question, exit ticket. I don't have time to show you all of those, but I hope you've liked what you've seen here so far.